guys. Uh, wasn't really planning to, but we just bought another car to flip. So we just picked up this jewel right here. Angie's excited to have a minivan, obviously. We'll give her a little bog. So, yeah. So not sure what's going on with it. Uh, the people said they thought it was like running rough part of the time, but we seem to have a bit of an issue, more like transmission or I don't know, possibly like a TPS thing. There was one point where she was uh, just giving it that normal amount of gas and it kind of took off on its own. So we'll get it figured out and uh, see if we can't turn a buck on it. All right, guys, I got the Kia in the shop this morning checking it out. So my wife drove it to town yesterday and it did throw the check engine light. I pulled the codes and it had a lean in both banks. Uh, I think it was a PO 171 and a PO 174. And then it had a PO 221, which is a bank two camshaft position problem. Um, I got online, did some research. They said it's very common on those lean codes for this boot to actually have cracks in the bottom side. So I'm getting ready to pull that off and see if that's the case with ours or look for any other kind of vacuum leaks because we got the mass airflow sensor here. So any air that's coming in between here and the throttle body is unmetered. So that's gonna make it run lean, which the oxygen sensors will pick up and give us those lean codes. Um, the the cam position thing this thing does have variable cam timing it's uh similar to the subaru it, it uses oil with a, a solenoid solenoid opens oil pressure comes in it actually actuates and changes the timing of the cam in relation to the crank um, so these things are very much like the subaru very sensitive to the oil if the oil is dirty, if the oil is thin, if it's the wrong kind of oil, it can cause that. Um, <clears throat> one other thing that we noticed is that once it warmed up a little bit, sitting at idle, the oil pressure light would actually come on. So that's obviously not good. Um, it didn't sound bad. I mean, I, I thought I got maybe a little bit of clatter, but definitely no rod knock or anything like that. So don't believe it was completely out of oil pressure but uh, obviously a problem. So I'm gonna look into that as well. I found some information online that uh, gave me a few things to check. So we're gonna look into that. And hopefully, uh, other than that, I'm just gonna check the brakes, uh, put some sway bar links on it, clean it up. And I think we should be able to turn a decent profit on it. Guys, I pulled this uh, air intake tube off between the air box and the throttle body. And it's cracked. So, man, those guys on the internet are smart. Apparently, this is a very common problem on Kia. It's also cracked here just a little bit, too. But so, if you have a Kia and you're getting codes for bank, both banks being lean, it's probably a good thing to check. Um, I also pulled the oil filter out, which goes in here. It's a canister type. And I got it laying over here in the drain pan, draining out. So you can see that it's it's definitely collapsed there. Um, one of two things I think is going on here. One is I read online that there's different lengths of oil filter. So I don't know if maybe this was supposed to have the shorter one, but they put the longer one in it, so it smashed it down. Um, or the other thing that's a possibility is that it's plugged up and then the, the pressure is sucking it in. So um, if that's the case, that would definitely explain our low oil pressure light at idle um, and probably also our, our chem position thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to town, get a new uh, oil filter and some oil for it, change the oil, and uh, we'll see if that takes care of that. All right guys, back out here in the shop tonight with the Kia. I got some parts in for it. So I showed you already how I found that air intake hose split. I went ahead and duct taped it and the code stayed off. So it's probably fine, but I do plan to sell this thing. So I wanted to make it right. So I went ahead and ordered a, a new one. Um, it was super cheap. It was like 15 bucks off of eBay or something like that. 
Um, this thing also makes a lot of clunking noise in the front end, especially like going down our gravel driveway, which is typically sway bar links, right? So I got a new pair of sway bar links for it. I'm going to slap those dudes on and uh, I think that'll pretty much be it. I'm going to check the brakes while I have the wheels off. The tires are in pretty good shape. Um, there's rust on the wheels. So when I take the wheels off, I am going to paint them black. Um, clean up the body. Some of this little damage where they've just rubbed it on the stuff. That should clay bar or polish off. So that shouldn't be a big issue. So yeah, just going to get those few things done. Um, we are going to keep it long enough to help us move. It's actually really handy for moving. And just open up the back, throw a bunch of totes in. There's tons of room, but um, we'll keep it at least till we get moved. Um, and then, yeah, she'll be ready to go. So just going to uh, put those parts on tonight, check the brakes, see where we're at there, and uh, get this thing ready to sell. All right, guys. Got that snazzy new intake hose on there. Got her all tightened down. That should be good to go. That should take care of the lean codes that we're getting and make it run good. Quit the little misfire stutter thing that it was doing. I'm going to go ahead now and jack it up and get it on stands and uh, see if I can change those sway bar links and check the brakes, paint the wheels, that kind of stuff. All right, guys. Got the uh, wheels off the front here. Um, one thing I did notice is there's a stud missing there. So I'm going to look up a... Uh, a stud and a lug nut hopefully that's not too big of a deal looking at the brakes at the same time you are they're decent they're half something like that there's those sway bar links that we're going to replace it's rusty looking down there those things normally when you get that clunking noise as you go over like a gravel road or whatever that's normally what it is so I already got those as I showed you already. Brakes are good. I'm gonna paint these wheels up so that those rust spots don't show through the hubcaps. Check the brakes here. About the same, about 50% or so. Good enough. Sway bar link. So yeah, the uh, front end's not looking too bad, no brakes at least. Um, I'm going to try to get these sway bar links on and then we'll jack up the back and look at those brakes. Alright guys, already got the uh, sway bar link changed here on the right front. New one in place there. Got this one off of the left front. and I just wanted to show you real quick what actually happens with these things it's these little ball ends that wear out so it just gets play in it you can see it's all dry inside of there but that that's the noise that you hear is that ball moving inside of its socket because it's just dry and no more lubricant in there All right, I got the uh, back wheels off. I'm just checking out the brakes here. A little bit of pitting in the rotors, probably mostly just from it sitting, not being uh, ran for a while. Looking at the pads, they look good. They actually look really good. They're pretty much brand new, it looks like to me. That's the left rear. Need to figure out if I can get this... Uh, bumper pad to turn black again I'll have to get online I know there's some stuff you can put on them I think I've even heard maybe peanut butter will do it but get online check that out maybe here's the right rear brake they also look pretty much brand new so we're good to go on brakes um, the only other thing one more thing I forgot to mention is the uh, AC is not very cold. I have a can of Freon here somewhere and the hose to put it in with, so I'll go ahead and show you how to do that too. As you saw, I got the wheels painted up. Uh, they came out really nice. I went ahead and put the back ones back on. 
which I think looks really good. I think it came out a lot better. Instead of that rust, we got just black in there. So I think that looks really good. Uh, I'm gonna try to run to town hopefully today, but if not, maybe tomorrow. Grab a new wheel stud and lug nut so we can get this one back together. Uh, the other sway bar link is supposed to be here tomorrow, so hopefully that shows up. Um, and uh, we'll get this thing on the road. Gonna grab a quarter tranny fluid, and I'm gonna try to uh, work on these headlights just a little bit, see if I can uh, clear those up some. That's what we ended up with. Not great. Let's compare it to the other side. So it's definitely better, but it's not great. So I don't know if it was really worth the time that it took or not, but I pretty much have to do this side now since I've done that side. So I guess we'll get started. All right, guys, I got both of the headlights done. Uh, it's definitely better. I don't know. It's not great. It's definitely better. So, it was probably worth the time, I'd say. They look pretty dingy at first. So, uh, one more thing I'm going to try to mess with today. This back bumper pad, which I mentioned already, is uh, very faded. Um, I was looking online a little bit and saw that you can possibly just take a heat gun to it and the heat will pull some of the oil back out of the plastic and turn it back to black. So I'm going to give that a shot. If that doesn't work, we may just try to rub some oil in it or something and uh, brighten it back up. As you can see, I got the caliper off, the caliper bracket, the rotor. Uh, I did have to fight with the rotor. One of the little screws that holds the rotor to the hub. Looks like it had the end of a bit off of an impact driver stuck in it from some time previous. So I ended up having to take a punch and just drive it around and rotate it until I could get it out. So I'll pick up a new one of those. But I went ahead and knocked the old broken stud out with the hammer. So I got it right there, and I got the new one stuck in the back, and then I just put some washers on here, and I bought a, an extra open-ended lug nut so that I could use it to pull this stuff through the hub. So that's what I'm getting ready to do now. new wheel stud ready to go just 
put it all back together now and uh, one more thing off the list all right guys got the new wheel stud in uh, had to replace that uh, rotor bolt funny thing was the auto parts store didn't have it we found it just at like the local hardware store so got those in uh, brakes back on new sway bar links in I'm gonna go ahead and uh, throw the front wheels back on this thing and get it out um, pretty much all we have left I want to put a can of Freon in it and clean it up and it's pretty much ready to go what's up guys back out here in the shop tonight I got the Kia in I'm trying to get the finishing touches on this thing we're basically done with it just a couple things left I uh, got a couple light bulbs out on the left rear that we're gonna try to fix tonight um, I got wiper blades coming they should have already been here by now I don't know what the deal is with that and the only other thing is the air conditioning isn't cold so I got it on now it's cool it's just not cold so uh, I did hear the compressor kick on so I know it at least has enough Freon in it to make the compressor work um, and everything's operational it just probably is low on refrigerant so it doesn't have enough to get real cold so what I did picked up a can of uh, refrigerant Freon us old heads like to call it Freon because that's what it used to be called so I picked up a can of refrigerant actually my beautiful wife picked it up for me and I got whoops I got my hose here so I'm going to show you how to add refrigerant to it and uh, hopefully that'll take care of the AC make sure this is backed out because the way this works it screws onto the can we make a good tight seal there and then we're going to hook it into the line down there and then we'll tighten this wing net down and it'll penetrate the top of the can and let the refrigerant out so it can go into the system as you can see there I just clipped it on Actually, you know what? I just thought of something. We're going to do something cool. I have a thermocouple that goes in my meter. And we're actually going to test this and see uh, how much difference it actually makes in the temperature. Alright, so we're getting uh, 68F right now, 67. Slowly dropping. So it came back to 67, so it's pretty much balanced out. So, what I'm going to do now is, like I said, tighten this wing nut down. It'll penetrate the top of this can. And then it will let the refrigerant go on in. Alright guys, after uh, playing with it a little bit, I did get the Freon to go in. Let's see how our temperature is doing. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. From 68 to 48. So that should do it for the AC. All right guys, last couple pieces of the puzzle on the Kia, other than detailing it. Got my bulbs. And then in here, it's an interesting way to pack them, but... Uh, 
had the wiper blades wadded up in that envelope, but I guess it didn't hurt them. So I'm gonna slap these on, slap the bulbs in the back, and this thing will be ready for a detail and we can ship it. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks for watching. I appreciate everybody that's liked and subscribed. Uh, please do so if you haven't. So here's the financial breakdown on the flip we did on the Kia. Uh, 400 bucks we bought the car for. Um, put another 97.60 into it, so I had roughly 500 bucks in it. Uh, sold it for 2,300. So we made a pretty good profit of 1802.40. Now, of course, for anybody that uh, works for the IRS or tax people, I uh, had about $1,900 of labor in this thing, so uh, I actually lost just a little bit of money, so uh, you'll be looking for that loss of my returns. <laughs> so again, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, remember, you never lose. Either you win or you learn. See you on the next one.